Greetings, my name is Yo Second, and welcome back to my Let's Play of Ghost Trick Phantom Detective. In the last episode, I managed to uh, break Detective Joad out of his cell and escape the special prison, but shortly after that, Inspector Campanella showed up and pretty much took him back into custody. But right before he was taken back, I had a conversation with Joad, and I learned a few interesting things. Number one... Joad isn't too terribly fork forthcoming about sharing every single little bit of information that he has with me because he suspects that uh, the face I'm wearing, Sissel's face, is not actually, well, Sissel's face, and that I'm somebody else entirely other than the character Sissel. Now, who the hell I could be if not Sissel? I have no idea. Two, well... We've, and we kind of already did, did, we kind of already figured this out already or but well Cabanella cares an awful lot about uh, his reputation in his line of work so much so that uh, he's pretty much willing to toss even his own former uh, his own former partner Joad under the bus or rather send him straight to the gallows if it would help him maintain a uh, perfect image much like his white coat. So, yeah, the guy's, a, the guy's a careerist, first and foremost, above all else. I kind of already figured that out a little while ago here, based on a few, based on a few clues. And number three, Jode had, sees, uh, Jode was, apparently sees uh, his uh, saving Lynn's life as a child as another murder that he committed because... When he tried to uh, put, when he tried to uh, get rescue Lynn from the man that was holding her hostage in the park all those years ago as a child, he decided to take the shot rather than risk having the risk, risk having the uh, criminal harm Lynn, and the criminal ended up dying as a result. And Joe apparently feels so guilty about this to where that he feels like he deserves nothing more than an execution for it. Even though Lynn still sees him as a hero for having saved her life in this respect. So, yeah. At least that's as I understood it, anyway. And that's pretty much everything, really. So, Joe's back in custody, so now I'm going to try to get over to where Lynn is over at the Justice Minister's office and see how she's doing. Chapter 10. 11.41 p.m. Not my assignment is to stop the ex not my assignment to stop the execution has ended in such an unsatisfactory way. I decide to go see Lynn at the Justice Minister's office. Yeah, this is definitely the same office I encountered several episodes ago. I knew it. Detective Joad's story about this other murder weighs on me heavily. Should I tell Lynn about it? I just don't know. Well, you're still alive. That's good. This time, Lynn isn't dead. But the atmosphere makes me think it might be too soon to count my blessings just yet. So, what are you doing uh, hiding on behind a desk? I'm glad Lynn isn't, Lynn isn't dead. What in the world is she doing? And again, do I really want to know? Well... It looks like um, our Justice Mister is dead. Eek! What kind of green is that? I mean, I know I'm a ghost and everything, but... Well? And? How did it go? Was Detective Joad still alive? He's already been executed by the time I got there. I did manage to save him, but... You did? I'm so glad. Wait a minute. Did you say, but? Yes, I did. I told Lynn about my adventure at the prison. About that other murder, though. I couldn't bring myself to tell her. 
Well, us were neglecting to tell her might come to bite us in the ass later, but I guess we got up the ante on the drama factor somehow, right? Inspector Capanella arrested Detective Jode? I can't believe it! Yeah, I feel the same way. I can't believe that wherever I go, somebody, somebody is always dead. Either you, or someone else. Sorry about that. So who is that line on the floor there? Oh, you noticed him, did you? That's the Justice Minister. The man who signed the order to carry out Detective Joe's execution. He was already dead when I got here. Shouldn't you have called for help in that case? Hmm. I guess so. You guess so! You are a detective, right? But I'm wanted, remember? For murder? Oh yeah, right. I was hoping we could save him without me getting caught. We, eh? Okay, so I guess we now gotta save you from whatever the hell killed you. Hey, can you hear me? Hmm. He's dead, but he still seems to be unconscious. Could you rescue him now while he's still unconscious? Instead of talking to him, I bet it'll be faster just to see for yourself what really happened. Yeah, I bet you're right. Back we go, then, to four minutes before his death. So what could have killed you in such a way to make you hold a pose like that as a corpse? Did somebody, did somebody pop a paper ghost in front of your face or something, and you died of fright? Emma! Oh, excuse me. What? All right. I'll do as you say. Do as you say. So, somebody coercing you on over the phone right now? This is terrible. wife again. Why doesn't she answer? <laughs> um, are you okay, man? Dear God. Tension is so thick you could cut off a knife. Oh... Are you having a heart attack or something, man? Medicine? Oh. Gah! Water. Wow. Such a foolish man. So you literally stressed yourself to death, is what I'm getting taken from this. Poor bastard. Such a foolish man. Oh, you woke up? He's a contradiction. Contradiction? The more we search for the truth, the further into a dilemma we fall. The world of men is steeped in contradictions. If we choose this, we can have that. If a man tries to have his medicine bottle and water pitcher too, he loses both. Oh, I don't know. To me, it looks like he could have had both of those things just now. He didn't know the truth about this about the world. That's why he died. Such a foolish man. Or maybe I should say, a pathetic man. That's a more fitting word. Very hard on yourself. 
Uh, I don't think this guy gets it yet. That the foolish and pathetic man is him. Is that what they call a contradiction? By the way, what's your name? Just call me a seeker of truth. Seeker of truth, huh? Sidestep that one, didn't he? So I guess we gotta find some way to keep him from knocking over his stuff. No need to think about too, no need to think too hard about this one. All I have to do is get is to get him his mess into him. Pretty simple. I sincerely doubt it's gonna be that simple. But there's one more thing that concerns me. What was that telephone call the Justice Minister got all about? It was right after that that his health took an instant downturn. I've never seen such a foolish, pathetic, and strange man. Uh, I think you'd better stop there. I think before anything, we should... See what... What the hell happened to your... Emma! Emma! Excuse me. Hey, it's you. Forgive me for calling so late, Mr. Minister. Who is this? How'd you get this number? We have your daughter. Oh, shit. Who is this? Amelie's tutor? Will a tutor call you at this hour? You're in some kind of dark, dank place. Where, I don't know. No. I'll say it one more time. We have your daughter. What? My daughter? Is she alright? Tell me she's alright. Here for yourself. Papa, help! I'm gonna be killed. What do you want? What are your demands? I believe you already made our demand known the other day. So, you've been in contact with them before all this. Oh. So it was you. And have you complied? Has the execution been carried out? Yeah, I knew it. They are, they are, they are basically coercing him into executing Jode. I didn't do it because of your- I didn't do it beca because of your demand. I did it because... That's my job! Yes. Yes, of course. They should be contacting me any minute now to confirmation. There's no need for this kidnapping! We're very thorough. You do well to remember that. Uh... And of course it goes without saying, we're watching you. If this information leaves that room, you'll never see your daughter again. I trust you understand that. Don't tell the police, is that it? Exactly. All you have to do is your job. Alright. I'll do as you say. I'll make sure the execution is carried out tonight. You have my word. Let's go there. I think it'll be important to at least see what this other location is first, and what we can do here before trying to stop him from, from trying to stop the minister from dying. Apparently, the police in in this country aren't so easily fooled. I had no idea word of tonight's deal had leaked. Luckily, I managed to arrange it so that the Justice Minister could hear her voice. What's taking the good so long to, ar to arrive? I'm starting to get concerned. Well, that's because I'm kind of dead. Hmm. I 
moves. I need you to move. Uh oh. This woman doesn't show any signs of moving from that spot. And I can't use the telephone line either. Hmm. Looks like I fell into a trap. A trap? If this was a trap, they would have to know about you. But I, I have no, I'm not, I'm not seeing any indication that anyone is even aware of your existence outside of, well, all those that you helped save up until now. Well, most of them anyway. Like Lynn. All women are like traps. Some are sweet traps. Others are bitter. Don't you understand that? Okay. Anyway, I think I better rethink things here. They wouldn't have included this in here unless it was for a specific reason. Maybe she'll move if I wait a little bit. Unless... right now. Like I said, all women are like traps. That and this are hardly related. When in the past, I can only use the line when the phone call, the phone is being used to make a call. Hmm. Looks like for all intents and purposes, this really was a trap. At least I got this phone number saved, so I'm sure this will be important to later. Mysterious kidnapping, eh? I'd like to find out more about it. But right now I have another problem to solve first. Cause as little trouble for cause as little trouble for others as possible. Now that's a rule to live by. Never mind that. I'll just start over. Head to the phone again. Skip the conversation. So they got recordings of they got recordings of the girl's voice. So they they clearly have some kind of bug inside their apartment. Stay right here for now. You did attempt to make a second call. Kidnapping, eh? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I know exactly who you were calling. Your wife. So maybe if I intercept the, 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 the connection, while you're attempting to go through, I'll be able to enter into the other phone line and see how what they're up to. Once again, I'm not sure I know the, what the words means, what the word means. But apparently, the cause of the mister, but it's apparently the cause of the mister's attack. Such a useless man, huh? A useless man caught up in a useless case. Why doesn't he understand that? Anyway, we only have four minutes here. Better do something about that medicine. I have to call my wife. I have to see if it's true. Maybe they called the wrong person. This mister doesn't doesn't accept the truth easily. Well, I mean, he's right to... As far as, far as I'm concerned, he's right to call. Because as we just found out, it was a recording that uh, Blue Lady had. So, and I mean, it doesn't hurt to at least check, you know? If it wasn't for the fact that, you know, it's his wife we're talking about. He's morally bankrupt. Okay, now you're taking it too far. His wife won't answer for some reason. Hmm. A wife who doesn't answer her phone. I think I know who that is. A morally bankrupt man who deserves a morally bankrupt wife. Why doesn't that man understand that? 
Now I'm sorry I ever brought this guy along. I'm still there. Line isn't working. Hmm. Apparently, only works if the other party answers. Oh shit! Let's examine this then. So this medicine stops the minister's attacks, eh? If I could, I'd spill them onto his desk right now. But unfortunately, even I, I can't even open the cap. What a shabby excuse for a man, huh? He he wears his important-looking uniform and sits work, sits working at his stately desk. But what does he have inside? Nothing. A miserable, shabby excuse for a man. As you already said, quite enough. She answered. Water pitcher. Hmm. Okay, I can flap. Okay, maybe I need to work my way up there. If only he could at least drink some of this water. Too bad he knocks his pitcher to the floor at the end of his four minutes. Such a stupid man. Huh? Once water is spilled, there is no getting it back. Not necessarily. And knowing this full well, why do people still spell water pitchers? I don't know. Those who do not learn from history are doomed to repeat it. Let's try flapping this thing. No, this is not working. Wait, what if I... Okay, I gotta flap it to where it hits the water pitcher, right? Okay, here we go. Uh-oh. Here it comes. His worry and anxiety have reached their peak. Such a disgraceful man. Huh? If one lives his life in fits, he's bound to be plagued by fits. It's so simple! Why doesn't he understand? But there wasn't a chance to rescue him before now. It's not over yet, though. I can't give up now! Okay, let's try trick the flag to where it hits... Hits the water jug right as it's about to knock over. Come on, buddy. Oh shit! There we go! Aha! There, that should help. At least now he's had some. At least now he's had some water. He's still breathing, apparently, but he looks far from recovered. Unfortunately, such a wishy-washy man, huh? He can't make up his mind whether to live or die. That's how he lives his life. Okay. At least now I bought some time to get his mess into him. Hell yeah. Hmm. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna hold... I'm just gonna wait right here at the phone in case somebody else calls or he tries to call... or he tries to call someone. Mr.'s fate has changed. The situation still seems the same. I can't move anywhere now. Did I miss something? I think I saw a path just for a second while the minister was drinking the water. Maybe should have started over from the beginning. Hmm. Right as he was drinking the water. Fate, well, the, well, the moment of fate change 
Still show the moment where he's grabbing the water? Okay, no, I don't think so. While he was drinking the water. So I guess I really do need to go back to beginning. Okay, let's try it now. Okay. There we go. Got it. There, that should help. Mm -hmm. Let's try spinning harder. Okay, I see. Ha! There we go. Okay, time for the next step. Now, about this mess and bottle. I think I'm gonna need to use this suit of armor somehow in order to knock the bottle towards him. If the minister is going to make a full recovery, I have to deliver this thing to him. But how is a ghost with no hands or feet supposed to do that? I guess I'll have to use my head instead. What do you think we've been using this whole time, man? Hmm. We got a curtain right there. Okay, let's try closing and see what's in the view. I think I'm forming an idea in my head. Maybe I need to knock this globe down, have this suit of armor hit it with its sword to knock it over to where the other armor is, maybe hit the bottle of medicine and have it roll over to the minister. Guess I'm assuming that's where this whole thing's going. I have no idea what I'm doing. I, I have no idea what I'm gonna be end, what, I, what I'm gonna end up doing here, but I'm just gonna roll with it. See what happens. light frame for its size. There sure are a lot of things that can fall down in this room. He's a fallen man. Huh? He deserves to have everything come tumbling down on his head. I don't know about the fallen man. I don't know about fallen man, but you talk like about you talk about him like he's your fall guy. I guess the key here is what orb objects are dropped in. I might have already screwed up then. experiment and see what else I can knock down. Spin this. Okay. Now let's swing. Hmm, that looks really good. If only the medicine ball was under that swing, that would go flying. But it's the wrong side of the room. Starting to form a plan here. Let's go back here. Raise the arm. Turn. Help me 
exactly. a lot heavier than it looks. It's made of some pretty thick iron. I'm gonna drop that on my feet. But I don't have feet, so I guess I don't have to worry. This guy is sweet to it. It's sharp enough to cut the medicine bottle in two. It's not long enough, is it? Such a reckless man. Huh? Only cowards like it. Only cowards like to keep weapons around. What a truly dangerous thing to have around! In any case, I bet I can use a sword somehow. Wait a minute. Raise this back down. Never mind, I thought I could ghost trick this thing, because it looked like something I could mess with. I think I need to restart after the fate change, because I'm hoping it will start me right on top of the thing. Yeah, there we go. Good. Perfect. Oh, I just had another thought. I need to do something about these papers, too, otherwise they'll just get in the way of the bottle and force me to start over again. So, I need... Okay, time for the next step. Now, about this medicine bottle. Let me think here. Better think carefully about what I drop and win. Let's try knocking this thing down. I 
gotta knock this globe down on top of this thing first, then have something heavy from this end on the left drop on top of this, send the globe flying into that into those papers, and then maybe uh, and then after that knock the ball over there, right? That's what I gotta do. Start. I think I might know what to do now. Maybe. Okay. Let's get on over there. And again, why would it stop this? I mean, it is just two papers. I'm really overthinking this. Messing. Yeah. Uh, you probably shouldn't down all those, man. Jesus Christ, you're an OD. There, the Mister finally took his medicine. I think he may even took too much medicine. Such a greedy man, huh? He's supposed to take two capsules with water. Why doesn't he know that? Aw, oh, cut the guy some slack. There, see? He's gonna probably die. Da -da -da. Phew. That was a lot of work. Well, hopefully this taught him a lesson. Huh? He greatly underestimated his dependence on his medicine. I hope you learned something from this pet experience. First, know yourself. That is the key to everything. I think you need to listen to your own advice. Anyway, let's get back to the world of the present. And so the Justice Minister is now back to life. But the furrows on his brow are even deeper now. There she is. 
and apparently our lady detective is the present cause of those furrows. Look, detective. He was sentenced after a fair trial, and the man himself wants to be executed. But there was no evidence! All they had was his own confession! But it was no ordinary confession. It was the confession of an esteemed detective. Stay back! I don't, I don't want anybody coming near me! Mr. Mister, please listen to me! I might be able to gather new evidence in that case tonight! What? So please, please! Just give me a little more time! I just got a call from the prison. Your death row convict apparently just escaped. Unfortunately, after all this time, it seems he now wants to dodge his punishment. But... When he's apprehended, his sentence will be carried out. Tonight. No. When sentence was handed down, you were against enforcing the death penalty. So why'd you sign the order all of a sudden? Well, I... I was simply performing my duty as Justice Minister. That's all there is to it. No, you... No. Blue guys got you by the balls. Lynn looks like she's about to rip into the Justice Minister. I think she's forgotten all about me. I think I'll send her a little signal. Well, that was easy. Sissel, there you are. It sounds like the minister is being very stubborn. That's right, he is. Maybe we shouldn't have saved him after all. The minister has to. The minister has to have the execution carried out tonight. He has a very good reason for it. Good reason? I told Lynn what I learned about the kidnapping. Kidnapping? They kidnapped the Justice Minister's daughter? Apparently. Oh my goodness. But still. That's still no reason to hurry forward with the execution. Even if, even, even though the kid isn't actually in current danger as far as we can see, I mean, we are talking about the life of a child being on the line here. Why don't you go ahead and say that to the Justice Minister, then? Poor man. I hate to do that to him, but then won't, won't he just question in how you know about the kidnapping? Oh, by the way. Do you, do you think you could carry me? Right. Sure. Not very handy, is it, having no legs? No, but I can essentially travel long distances via telephone line. What are you going to do with that globe? Crack me in the head with it? Oh, this? Uh, <laughs> Pay no attention to this. It's kind of hard not to pay attention to it. By the way, and please pardon me if this is a silly question, were you talking to somebody just now? But of course not, right? I mean, there's no such thing. As ghosts, right? Are you remembering me, my good man? Are you talking about me? Yeah! No, there's no such thing! This is a dream! It's nothing but a dream! Don't you remember me? My dream is talking to me! Hmm. So now I'm a dream, eh? Mr. Minister? We know. We know about your daughter. She was kidnapped, wasn't she? If the execution doesn't take place tonight, you won't see her again. Oh boy. You're messing! Medicine! 
I mean, he kind of downed the whole damn bottle, so... Oh, what am I going to do? The death row prisoner has escaped. If he isn't executed tonight... My daughter... My Amelie... My, my Amelie... But what if the... What if that execution isn't the right thing to do? We're... Yeah, but, I mean... Seriously. I mean, it's obviously not the right thing to do, but, I mean, we do... Yeah, I'm not gonna repeat myself. Come on, Lin. If you keep pressing him like that, he's gonna die again. What can I do, then? Maybe I should be the one to do something? I don't know. We have to do something about that kidnapping. Until we do that, it'll be impossible to get the minister on our side. That's the way I see it. I think I'll start by gathering info on the kidnapping. And the only way I know how. We gotta go find his family, right? Don't you think there's something fishy about this kidnapping thing? Fishy? I mean, the demand is to carry out an execution that was already set to be carried out. It's just like the minister said. There's no need for such a kidnapping. Hmm. You might be right. Are you... talking to somebody again? No, no. There's no such thing. No such thing! I'm a realist! I'll never believe in them! Not the existence of ghosts, not in, the, not in this escape from prison, and not, e and not in this kidnapping! Hmm. This realist has ran away from several very real facts. And high speed, too. And anyway, let me try and find out more about this kidnapping. After all, I know where the kidnappers are. Oh, that's right. You have their telephone number. I think I'll go see what these kidnappers look like. But first, I'm gonna have to try to make you accept reality. We meet again, Mr. Minister. What? I've never seen you before! In any case, I'm a very busy man. If you're a dream, please don't bother me when I'm awake! Uh, I'm not a dream. Looks like it's just a waste of time trying to talk to this guy. I think you're right. Stubborn Justice Minister. Please sp stop speaking ill of me inside my own head! That's okay. I can speak ill of you everywhere outside your head. I'm a resourceful man. I got plenty of places I can do that. Even in this very room. I really should pay the kidnappers hideout a visit. After all, if we want the Justice Minister to come around, we have to solve this problem first. I feel like I'm slowly moving away from my own mystery. But I'm not the kind of guy who can abandon a little lady in trouble. So I guess I'm in this one for a little while longer. I had a feeling that. This guy, this guy and his family would be come and would be crucial somehow later on. Anyway, I think I'm gonna go ahead and cut this episode off here, and we can try to do do something about this guy's family in the next episode. I hope you guys enjoyed this latest episode of Ghost Trick Phantom Detective. If you did and you want to see more content from me, feel free to subscribe to my channel. I'll see you all next time. Take care.